Hi there, I'm Matt Simmons. I'm a research associate with the Sims Initiatives, a digital humanities project at the University of South Carolina Libraries. We're funded in part by a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of Sims' excellent ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it's part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam in the Cabin. At this point in the story, the Grayling family and the stranger McNabb have just been joined at their camp by another traveler, Major Lionel Spencer, James and Joel Sparkman's former commander during the war. This is part six of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling, or Murder Will Out. You've just come in the right time, said Sparkman to the Major. The bacon's frying and here's the bread. Let's down upon our haunches in right good earnest camp fashion and make the most of what God gives in the way of blessings. I reckon you don't mean to ride any further tonight, Major. No, said the person addressed. Not if you'll let me lay my heels at your fire. But who's in your wagon? My old friend, Mrs. Graylin, I suppose? That's a true word, Major, said the lady herself, making her way out of the vehicle with good-humored agility and coming forward with extended hand. Really, Mrs. Graylin, I'm very glad to see you. And the stranger, with the blandness of a gentleman and the hearty warmth of an old neighbor, expressed his satisfaction at once more finding himself in the company of an old acquaintance. Their greetings once over, Major Spencer, Major Spencer readily joined the group about the fire, while James Graylin, though with some reluctance, disappeared to resume his tolls of the scout while the supper proceeded. And what have you here, demanded Spencer, as his eye rested on the dark, hard features of the Scotchman. Sparkman told him all that he himself had learned of the name and character of the stranger in a brief whisper and in a moment after formally introduced the parties in this fashion. Mr. McNabb, Major Spencer. Mr. McNabb said he's true blue major and fought with Camden when General Gates so hard, uh, fought so hard to bring the damn militia back. He also fought at 96 in Calpins, so I reckon we had as good account of him as one of us. Major Spencer scrutinized the Scotchman keenly, a scrutiny which the latter seemed very ill to relish. He put a few questions to him on the subject of the war, and some of the actions in which he allowed himself to have been concerned, but his evident reluctance to unfold himself, a reluctance so unnatural to the brave soldier who had gone through his tolls honorably, had the natural effect of discouraging the young officer, whose sense of delicacy had not been materially impaired amid the rude jostlings of military life. But, though he forbear to propose any other questions to McNabb, his questions continued to survey the features of his sullen countenance with curiosity and a strangely increasing interest. This he subsequently explained to Sparkman when, at the close of supper, James Graylin came in and the former assumed the duties of the scout. I have seen that Scotchman's face somewhere, Sparkman, and I'm convinced at some interesting moment. But where, when, or how, I cannot call to mind. The sight of it is even associated in my mind with something painful and unpleasant. Where could I have seen him? I don't somehow like his looks myself, said Sparkman, and I must list he's rather more of a Tory than a Whig, but that's nothing to the purpose now. He's at our fire, and we've broke, broken hoe cake together, so we cannot rake up the old ashes to make a dust with. No, surely not, was the reply of Spencer. Even though we know him to be a Tory, that call that calls a formal quarrel should occasion none now. But it should produce watchfulness and caution. I'm glad to see that if that you have not forgot your old business of scouting in the swamp. Can I forget it, Major? demanded Sparkman, in tones which, though whispered, were full of emphasis, as he laid his ear to the earth to listen. James has finished supper, Major. That's his whistle to tell me so. And I'll just step back to make it clear to him how we're to keep up the watch tonight. Count me in your arrangement, Sparkman, as I am one of you for the night, said the Major. By no sort of means, was the reply. The night must be shared between James and myself. If so be you want to keep company of one or the other to us, why, that's another thing, and of course, you can do as you please. We'll have no quarrel on the subject, Joel, said the officer good-naturedly as they returned to the camp together. This has been part six of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. I hope that you'll turn in next, tune in next time for another section of this ghostly tale. In the meantime, if you'd like to read the full text of this story or one of the many other Sims works we have available on our site, please simply visit us at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, 
Have a very happy Halloween.